Hello, welcome again to our today's class. Today we're going to look at how to write an effective business plan. Yes, I have this business idea that I've come up with and I'm looking forward to implementing the idea. What am I supposed to do? What is the next procedure? So the next procedure is to write a business plan for your business. So now we, we understand what is this thing that we call a business plan. It's a document that describes the goal and objectives of the business and clearly show how and when you're going to achieve them. So the business plan is going to be like your roadmap to owning that business that you have always dreamt of and showing the operating business expenses that you're going to incur during the process of implementing your business plan. Now we are asking ourselves, why should I write a business plan? What's the, what's the main purpose of writing that business plan? Number one, if you want to obtain financing, maybe from your small, from your banks or circle or from friends, you the business plan acts as a, a blueprint of what you want to achieve. And people who want to finance you can go through your business plan and understand what, what you really want to achieve. Then number two, it guides you in operating that kind of business that you want to operate. So a business plan is like a guiding thing that is made to help you operate that business because you are able to know the amount of money that you require to start the business, the kind of employees that you require for that business, how you're going to market your business and which type of product you're going to sell to your customers. And then number three, it's like a guide in managing a business. Because in your business plan, you're going to highlight how your organization is going to be managed and the kind of people that you require on board to help you achieve that goal. And then number four, it helps to communicate clearly to the interested parties. If maybe you're going to do the business with your partner, the business plan will help the partner to understand the type of business that you want to implement and what is required for you to implement it. And lastly, it acts as a marketing tool because when you are going to start a business, you require to have a marketing plan that's going to help you to market your product outside there. So those are the main purpose of writing a business plan and they're going to help you to achieve all those five things that we have said. And then someone asked himself, when is a business plan supposed to be written? You are supposed to write a business plan. Immediately you decide that I want to go into business or I want to become an entrepreneur. So immediately you decide that this is what I want to do. The first thing you need to do is to sit down and draft a business plan. Number two, it's supposed to be written before you start any business. You don't have to implement the idea before you write a business plan. Write a business plan before you start the business. And then number three, it, it's written when you are updating a particular service or expansion plan that you have. So this one applies to that person who has already started a business and now you want to expand your business, maybe to other branches or to other counties, so you can update your business plan so that it can cover the new development. And then you can ask yourself, what are the types of business plans? that are um, likely to come across. So number one, you can have a retail business plan where you are going to have a shop, maybe if, uh, if you are selling products, maybe eggs, or you have a shop. So if you have a shop, you're doing a retail business where people are coming and buying and going, uh, buying from you, maybe in small quantities. Uh, we have also a wholesale business plan. This is where you are selling to other sellers so that they can go and sell in their shops. And then number three, we have service business plan. This usually uh, applies for those people who are in service industry. So maybe you are you are do you have a salon or you are starting an institution or you're starting any business that is offering service to the customers. That's you, you come up with a service business plan. And then number four, we have a menu business plan. This applies mostly in the industry, hotel industry. So you are going to have a menu of what you're going to make. And then you make a business plan that is detailing what you're going to sell. And then lastly, for any other type of business, maybe for manufacturing industry or any, any business like selling water and the sorts, you need a business plan for that. So that's where those are the type of business plan that were expected to come across. And now you are asking yourself who is supposed to write the business plan. So anybody who has a plan to earn, to own a business, 
it's your responsibility to write a business plan or a support agency that is writing uh, 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 maybe specialized specifically for writing business plan. They help organizations or business owners who have difficulties in drafting business plan to come up with this business plan. So for example, we have the Kenya Industrial Estates. They help people to write business plan or Faulu Kenya. Faulu Kenya has it also people to write business plan. Or number three, you can use a consultant who specifically does the work of writing business plan for businesses. So those are the three people who are supposed to write business plan. We we'll say if you are a business owner or manager who wants to start a business, you're supposed to write a business plan. And if you are a, a support agency that is specifically meant for writing business plan, you're also supposed to, they also write business plan or a consultancy that is specifically designed to write business plan. Now we can ask ourselves, how is the business plan written? What are the procedures of writing a business plan? So number one, we need to identify that a question that could be collected related to a business. So if for example, I want to start selling water in my area. So maybe I'm in a place where there's a shortage of water. The first thing is I need to identify a question. And the question here is, is there a lack of water in the place I want to go and set my business? And then number two, by determining what further information needs to be gathered to answer the question. So I need to determine the information that I require to gather information in relation to selling water in that place, specific place that I want. And then number three, comparing various alternatives. There are different alternatives. Maybe we have a borehole in my area or maybe we have shops that specifically sell water. I need to compare all these alternatives before I start selling my water, the water that I want to supply. Then by making a decision on each question, so I've come up with different questions. Now I need to make specific decisions that will guide me in answering that question and to come up with a business plan. And then now, what are the sources of information for a business plan? Now you have come up with a business idea. Now you need to find information for your business plan. So number one, you go to the customers. The customers are the people who are going to buy your product. And then you go to the consumers. The consumers are still the people who are going to use your product or your services. And then lastly, the suppliers. These are people who are going to give you product or services so that you can resell to others. So those are the three people you're going to go to for you to get information in relation to your business plan. And then now, what are the advantages? of a business plan. Why should I have a business plan? So the first advantage is it, it acts like a blueprint for your business, yeah? So when you are diverting from your core idea, you're able to go back to your business plan and check and see where you're losing focus. And then number two, it acts like a test. It tests the idea. So you have come up with this business plan and this business plan helps you to see the reality of what you want to implement. So most of, in most occasions, people write business plan and then they are like, this is not the idea I wanted. Or this is something so big that I can't handle. And maybe they drop out of the way. So a business plan help to test whether the idea that you wanted to do, you if it's in on paper, can you be able to implement it on the ground based on the facts that you have seen in your paper? And then number three, it shows the, co the ability and commitment of the owner of the business. So when a person sits down and draft a business plan, that shows that this person is committed to doing that business that he wanted. Yeah. So if a friend of yours wants to start a business and then he tells you or she tells you that I've written a business plan, there's a person who is committed in achieving that business idea. And then it forces entrepreneurs to establish written goals and objectives for the proposed businesses. So a business plan enables a business owner or an entrepreneur to write down goals and objectives that he wants to achieve in his business. And then it also, it also acts as a way of checking the viability of your business. Yeah. So it's really important for you to write a business plan because you can be able to check the viability of the business that you want to go into. Yeah, it, it, it helps you to see, yeah, you have a clear vision of that type of business you're going to do before you put it into the ground. And then lastly, it helps in sourcing for finances, more especially if maybe the organization that wants to fund your business idea, they'll be able to use your business plan to know what really you want to, 
extremely met in the ground. Now we look at what are the qualities of a good business plan. Yeah, uh, a business plan has to be good, yeah? And it also ha need to have qualities, yeah? So the first thing is a business plan should be simple. Yeah, when you're writing a business plan, stop using those vocabularies that are so complicated. Just use simple English that someone can read at a glance and be able to understand what you want to implement. And then number two, the sentence should be flowing logically. The sentence should follow one another. So you avoid mixing up sentences in your business plan. And then number three, it should be brief and direct to the point. When you're writing a business plan, just ensure that those points that you need to be captured, they're the ones coming out very, very clearly. And then number four, the logic. Your business idea should be very logical and the, the paragraph should follow one another. They should be connected to each other. Then number five, whatever you're writing should be a true value of what is going to be on the ground. And lastly, you need to use figures and words. More especially when you are, write, you are doing the financial plan. We need to see the figures. We need to see uh, the projected income that you're likely to get from your business. So those are the benefits and the qualities of a good business plan. Now let's go direct to how to write a business plan. And we look at the components of a business plan. <clears throat> the first component is an executive summary. And then the second one is a business description. Then number three, the marketing plan. Number four, organization and management plan. Number five, production and all operational plan. And then lastly, the financial plan. Now let's start with the executive summary. And the executive summary is usually a summary of each chapter in your business plan. It's usually supposed to be one and a half or to two pages or two pages. So it, it, it gives a summary of everything in your business plan. That's including the business description, the marketing plan, production and operation plan, and the financial plan. So the, the executive summary is usually written the last one after you've already given details on the other chapters. <clears throat> Next, we look at the business description. <laughs> now, as a business owner, you are supposed to describe what your business is all about. So the first thing you need to do is to give a background of the owner, you who is going to start the business. <clears throat> you are supposed to tell us more about yourself. So we need to see your name as the owner, maybe the age, the address, the occupation, education, professional background, your business experience, among anything relevant to that business that you want to do. And then number two, you're supposed to see the business name. <clears throat> For example, you've come up with a, a name like, uh, you, okay, I don't know, a name like uh, Nelly Business Enterprises. So you're supposed to tell us the name of that business and then you describe as why you chose that uh, specific name. And then next we need to see your logo, the logo that identifies your business and then where the business is going to be located, the place and also the site. So you, you should give us a direction to where the business is going to be. And then you need to give us a map of the location. Lastly, the fiscal address. This includes the email and the website of your business. So that is very, very important for your business, for the business plan. After that, we need to see the form of business ownership. Now you have already told us about the business and you, the owner, we already know you. Now what next? Is the business going to be a sole proprietorship, a partnership, a company, a cooperative? So you need to tell us maybe this business I'm starting is going to be a sole proprietorship and I'll be the only uh, person who will be entitled to profit and losses or this business is going to be done as a partnership or we're going to register as a company. So that one needs to be detailed in your business plan. And you also need to tell us why you chose to, uh, to you choose that kind of business ownership and give us the advantages and disadvantages of that method you have chosen. And then you need to tell us whether the business is a startup or is an ongoing business. So this is where we say the other time on the types of business ownership, where is either you start the business or you buy <clears throat> an existing business. So you are supposed to tell us whether you're starting that business 
all is an ongoing business and also give us the activities that that business is going to be doing. So that one is very, very important in your business plan. The next thing we need to know is the products and services that you're going to offer as a business owner. So you as a business owner, you need to come up with that product that you're going to sell. If you're selling service or if you're selling a product, it's very important to clearly describe and include the features of the products and services that you're going to offer. And also tell us the benefits that the product is going to have for the customers who are going to buy that product. So that one is also important for you to consider when you are writing a business plan. Uh, the next thing we we'll look at is you need to justify why you think that's a very good business opportunity that needs to be implemented. So for us, you, you, for the, you're going to detail it in your business plan by giving us the reason you chose that kind of business and you, you explain to us why you feel that that business idea is very profitable and it's worthy being invested in. So that one you also need to consider. After that, you look at the industry so you have selected this business that you want to do. You're supposed to tell us in your business plan what industry that business is going to belong to. If you have started a matatu industry, for example, that business automatically belongs to the transport industry. And if you are also you have selected an institution or an education industry, that is automatically and uh, your business is going to end up in a in the education industry. So you need to tell us the industry that your business is going to belong to. And also tell us the industry trends. Is the industry growing? Is it declining or is it stable? So it's very important to explain what is happening in that type of industry that you are going to. So that means that you are supposed to do more and more research on the kind of industry that you're supposed, you, are, you want to implement your business idea in and also explain whether your business what what you expect in that industry if it's a growing industry we obviously they expect that the business idea will work and it's going to grow then you are supposed to tell us the industry characteristics if it requires a high capital outlay or it requires a, a, a high level of technology that one is supposed to be outlined in your business plan the next thing we are going to look at is the goals of business yeah so we have come up with this business idea we need to have goals that us as a business owner we are supposed to achieve so the first goal in goals you are supposed to tell us what you want to achieve in the long term yeah so you can come up with something like to become a quality leader in east and central africa or to become a market leader in kenya or to be able to penetrate in the other markets so that's that's uh, an example of a goal then you should have an objective of your business so what does this mean you need to tell us what the business want to achieve in the short term goals are for long term objective are for short term so objective you should maybe come up with something like be able to maximize profit or be able to increase our sales within two years or within six months so that's what you're supposed to see in your business plan and then after all the goals the next thing you're supposed to see is how you're going to penetrate into the market. That's what we call entry and growth strategies. So you need to consider the competitive advantage of your product among the competitors, pricing and distribution of the competitors, advertisement or the promotional methods. That one is very, very important. So the, in the entry plan, the competitive advantage of the business that's what your business has. You need to compare it with your competitors. You also need to look at the weakness of the competitors you're going to compete with in the market. You look at the pricing plan. How are they pricing their product? And what are you going to use in pricing yours? And then also we need to see the plans on how you're going to attract your consumers so that they can be able to use your product. So entry method, that's very important. You need to look at it very, very well so that you can know how to penetrate so, so that you can you don't start a business and then you're not able to get consumers for your products when looking at the growth plan you should look at the signals in the industry are, are the businesses that are doing the same thing like you are they growing so you look at the trends what's happening in the business industry 
you look at the opportunities that are coming from the trends that you have already seen, and then you come up with plans so that you can take advantage of the opportunities that are coming your way. And then lastly, you do a SWOT analysis. So we know SWOT analysis is the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we're likely to experience in our marketplace. So these ones should also be in your market plan, in your business plan, sorry. So the next thing we are looking at is the marketing plan. Now we have already seen how we are going to enter into the market in our business plan. Now we need to come up with a detailed market plan. How are we going to market our products to our customers? So what is it that we need to understand in our market plan? The first thing is we need to know our customers. <clears throat> so understand the potential customers that you are targeting and know what they need. <clears throat> if you are targeting to sell your product to wholesalers, know what the wholesalers need. If you are targeting to sell your product to retailers, know what the retailers need. If you are doing maybe a service product or you're selling a service, know what is required in that industry. <clears throat> and then next, be able to determine the location of your customer so that you can know when you're marketing how you're going to reach them. So determining the location of your customer is very important and should be detailed in your business plan. Then you need to know what the customers are looking for in your product or service. If number one, they are looking for the maybe low prices compared to the competitors, you need to look at that and see how you are going to price your product so that it can be able to sell to them. If they are looking for quality, detail it in your plan, how you're going to offer quality services. If they are looking for maybe a good shape or good material, detail it in your business plan, now you're going to do it. So after that, we look at what is it that we're going to consider now as a business, yeah? So we should consider advertisement and promotion. We consider variety of goods and services, credit, credit facilities where we are going to get our, our, our financing or how we're going to get our suppliers on credit, capabilities of employees, and then lastly, the methods of selling. So that's also important in your business plan. You need to get it there. The next thing in your market plan, you need to look at the market share. So yeah, your market share can be determined uh, by the amount of unit sales that you are likely to get per month. So you need to calculate that one and get the market share. In estimating the market size, one needs to list down the businesses selling similar products in the marketing in the marketing so for example maybe you are opening a shop somewhere and this shop has an pesa so you need to look around and detail those other shops that have the same products that are similar to you so that you can be able to come up with a marketing share for your business so that one should also be detailed in your business plan and then next we look at the competition you need to look at the competition around you if you're going to start this product you're going to sell Look at how many people are selling the same thing. Are they growing? Are they succeeding or are they failing? Then from there, you can determine the gaps that you need to fill. So determine your potential competitors and the size in terms of assets, sales, volume, and market share of the major competitors in the market. That's very important for you. You need to look at your competitors around you and determine what they're selling and know the price of what they're selling so that you can come up with the price for your product. Plan to capitalize on the weaknesses of uh, the weaknesses of your competitors and increase and also come up with something that will be able to to be better than what they are offering. So that's also important. That should be detailed in your business plan. <clears throat> now we look at how are you going to promote your business. Yeah, that is also important in your marketing plan. You need to look at. Am I going to market my product in social media? Am I going to market them in TV? Am I going to do promotions? So you need to look at all those things and see how your products are going to be portrayed out there. Because also your brand, your brand needs to be identified eh, and be associated with you. So the image that you're going to project to the, to the consumer will determine if you're going to make sales. So those are things you need to consider. You look at how you're going to advertise your product or services. We also look at how you're going to measure the effectiveness of your advertisement. If you have decided to employ maybe a social media manager to market for you, or you have a sales team, 
you need to come up with a way you're going to measure the effectiveness of the advertisement they're doing. And maybe if you are in the food industry, you need to look at how you're going to promote the product you're selling by offering free samples maybe to people who are coming to your shop so that they can be able to test and see what you're offering in the market. So checking your method of promotion should be your priority and come up with something that is going to work for you. So the next one is pricing. Now we have come up with this product. We need to know how much it's going to cost the customer. The methods of calculating the selling price for your product or services, you need to consider the following factors. Number one, the income of clear clients targeted. So you need to look around you where you're selling your product and see what is the income level of your clients. So if you have a product in maybe Kibera, you need to look at the income of those clients and price your product accordingly. And you also need to look at the prevailing market prices of the product that you're selling. You compare the prices before you make your own product, your own price. And you also consider the cost of raw materials of or the product that you've produced so that you can be able to balance between the profit and the losses. So you consider what is going to work for you. And lastly, you consider the nature of competition yeah, in the industry that you have decided to venture into. So that is also important for you and should be outlined in your business plan. Another thing that you need to look at is the credit terms to be offered. What kind of credit will you give to your loyal customers or the ones that you know? There are people who can be your loyal customer and maybe they buy from you every now and then. Sometimes they may come to buy from you on credit. So you need to know the limit of the credit that you want to offer and when the customer is likely to pay back. And then you look at the discount offered. So there's a time you may decide to offer a discount to your customers. So you need to look at when are you going to offer this discount? Trade discount or after sales discount or discount offered after purchase. So that one is important to outline in your business plan. And then we are looking at the sales tactics. Now you have the product. How am I going to sell the sale, the product to my customers? So the selling tactic you'll employ will depend on the type of selling that you want to do. If we're doing direct selling to the customers, this is where the customer walk in and they buy from you, or personal selling, you go to the customer and tell them what you're selling, or selling directly through an agent. So you need to consider that one in your business uh, business plan. Or if you intend to sell indirectly to customers, how are you going to recruit the sales team, retain them, and remunerate them? So mostly we have seen <coughs> salespeople are usually paid on commission. <coughs> Sorry. So you need to consider how you're going to pay your sales team. And if you tend to sell through distributors, you need to know how you're going to select them and how you're going to motivate them so that they can sell your product to a wider range. So that's what you should consider in your sales tactics and should be detailed in your business plan. <laughs> and then we are looking at how you're going to distribute your product. So here yeah, you're looking at how your product is going to leave your shop to your customers. So you, you, you are going to look at uh, <clears throat> the means of transport you're supposed to use, the methods of transport and how they, what uh, cost they're going to cost you per month. And then from there you can determine the type of distribution channel that you expect to use. So that one is very important. And that one is important in marketing plan. From there, we can move to the next one, organization and management plan. In a, in a, a business, you need to know if you're going to have a management team and the people who are going to work under that management team. So the first thing, you maybe you're going to be the managing director, you need to detail your duties and responsibility, your qualification, and why you, and the experience that you have in that managerial level. And if you have a purchasing manager, you also need to detail that the duties are responsibilities, qualification, and experience. In short, for every personnel that you have, you're going to have in your organization, you need to detail their qualification, their duties and responsibilities, and what you're going to pay them. That one should be outlined very, very clearly in your business plan. Then you are going to tell us how you're going to recruit them. Yeah, the recruitment, training, and promotion. So recruitment, you tell us the process of recruiting, 
um, whether you're going to advertise, whether you're going to port them, or you're going to use the recruiting agencies, that one should be detailed in your business plan. Uh, and maybe you're going to use referrals or word of mouth. Then, then you are going to tell us how you're going to train them. Yeah. After you've employed them, the first thing is to induct them. So you need to do induction training, which will give them uh, an idea of what they're supposed to do in the business. So you need to tell us how you're going to do training in your organization of your staff. Yeah. If you are going to do induction training on the job training or off the job training, that one should be detailed clearly in your business plan. Then you should tell us how you're going to do promotions for your employees or your personnel. So you need to have a, an evaluation merit of how you're going to promote the hardworking employees in your organization, or you're going to take them for an, an outreach or maybe give them a retreat that should be shown in your business plan. And you're also supposed to tell us about remuneration and incentives how you're going to pay them. And it should be in line with the, the firm policies on remuneration so that you can offer attractive salaries to your employees and as well as motivate them to continue working for you for a long time. And then we look at the incentives. You tell us what other incentives you're going to give to employees. If you're going to give them bonus, you indicate. If you're going to give them commission, you indicate. If you're going to give them lunch, you indicate. If you're going to give them tea and all overtime allowance should be clearly indicated. So that every person who is going through your business plan can be able to understand the procedure of how you're going to train them, how you're going to promote them, how you're going to give them incentives. Yeah. So we have done that. Now we are looking at the licenses that we require in our businesses. Yeah. Trading licenses are paid for in order to start trading in any country and in Kenya. Yeah, you, you, you get licenses from your city council and you get licenses from maybe the ministry of a, the certain area that you want to do, maybe transport or something else. You need to get the licenses and also state the purposes of those licenses. Yeah. So depending on the nature of business you're going to do, you're supposed to look for the permits for you to do that business. So it, detail them in your business plan. And then the bylaws. This is where the business will need to comply to all the bylaws that are issued by the public health, the county council, the municipal council, or the city council. So ensure that one is also highlighted in your business plan. So ensure you follow, you, you indicate all the legal services that you require, the legal services that you may require when you're writing contracts, if you are in a partnership, drafting legal letters, interpreting the labor laws and employment. So you need to indicate the legal firm that you're going to work with and the lawyers. So they should also be detailed in your business plan. So that's the end of our organization management plan. Now we look at the production uh, and operation plan. Production and operation plan, this is what you're going to put in the ground for that business to work. So the first thing we need to look at the production facilities and the capacities, yeah? So you need to tell us the type of facilities that you require for you to start that, that business. You list all the equipment required, the machinery required, and the cost of those machineries. Explain the plans for repairs and maintenance of that machineries that you're going to use. And then show us the office layout. So the office layout should, in, should be indicated in the business plan. And the levels of production, whether you're going to produce a lot of things or the minimum that you're going to start with, and then explain how you're going to expand in the future and uh, the future expansion in your business plan. That one should be detailed in the production facilities and capacities. Then you should, uh, you should have a farm layout. So you need to have a clear, a clear sketch of your farm, how it's supposed to look at, to look like. So that one should also be in your business plan. You, you sketch on that farm how you require it to look like. Yeah, I know you have not started, but you need to have a sketch of how it should look like. That one is also important. Uh, now we look at the production strategy. We have already done, we have trying the uh, facilities that we require. Now we are starting the production process. So for that one, uh, the first thing you need to know is to describe 
the production development from idea to a sellable product. So now the idea we had is this one, and the end result we have is a certain product. You need to describe it in your business plan, how it's supposed to, to move from the idea part to the product part. Indicate the cost that you incur when developing your new product. Ensure that you have the cost of, of developing that product so that it can be easy for you to do the pricing. And then what kind of methods you use for the production strategy. So ensure you, you outline the method that you're going to use for that product to have the end result of the product that you want to sell out there. You also need to uh, discuss the materials that you require, who is going to supply the materials for you, <coughs> and the alternative source <coughs> that are available for you. So that one is important also uh, in your business plan. Now we look at the production process. The production process is showing the stages uh, that are you going to use to, pro to produce that product or services until the end result. So you should highlight yeah, the materials that you're going to use in the production process and what external factors are likely to affect the production process. Uh, we, the external factors, we know we have external and internal factors. Well, external factors are usually, we, we describe them using the peso, yeah? Uh, and then the internal uh, factors are the factors that affect you within the organization. So in the production process, we need to see the external factors that are likely to affect the production process. These are the forces outside the, uh, the, the company or the business. You need to highlight them before you start the production process and show, also show us how you're going to minimize the effect of those external factors. So that one is also crucial in your business plan. Uh, they should be well highlighted. And then next, we are supposed to look at how the production of, is going to affect the operation. So the first thing you need to look at is the health regulations. Uh, if you are in the manufacturing industry, you are required to have um, clearance from public health, and this was supposed to be adhered to may, if you are in a manufacturing sector. So the health regulations are important. You need to go and sort them out from the government department that is really that is concerned with it, so that one should be indicated in your business plan. And then the safety, the safety of the workers who are going to work in that organization. So you are supposed to ensure that the workers have the required uh, materials that they knew they're supposed to use, maybe mask, boots, jacket, or helmets. So you as a business owner, you're supposed to highlight that one and detail it in your business plan. When you're going to implement, you know what you require for the safety measures of your workers. You also need to look at the environmental regulations uh, of the business you're going to implement. You need to see the major issues that may arise when you start that business. So for that one, for those who are in those crucial, who want to, uh, to, uh, to start business in those crucial areas, they're supposed to get legis legis legislation from the government and ensure that they adhere to that one. So that one should also be detailed in your business plan. So that one is important and you should consider it in your business plan. Now we look at the last stage, which is the financial plan. Uh, uh, you have made the business plan. We have seen that idea from the first stage, from the, the time the owner said is the owner, blah, until now we are at the financial stage. Now the financial plan is going to help you uh, as a business owner, maybe to receive funds from an uh, organization that want to fund you. So it's important to have it and to clearly use uh, figures that are very reasonable. So you're not supposed to guess figures when you're making your business plan, uh, your financial plan. So the financial plan comprises analyzing financial requirements, all business and developing financial plans. What is the objectives of a financial plan? A financial plan. Number one, they help you to realize a steady growth on income through the period. So the financial plan is going to help you to have a steady growth on income throughout the period you are in business. And then number two, they will help you maintain and control expenses. All your expenses can be recorded and you can be able to control them. And then number three, they will help you to have 
and effective accounting systems. So accounting systems are important in any businesses because they can, they can help you to see whether you're growing or not. And then they will help you to always maintain a healthy liquidity position throughout the trading period. So that's the important of, importance of having a business plan. Uh, financial assumption that we may arise from our financial business plan, number one, we are expected that the expenses are expected to rise yeah, because it's a new business and expenses are likely to rise because you're spending at this period. Then number two, the creditors are supposed to increase. Uh, as a startup, you are, sub, you are all, all likely to go and borrow from your suppliers so that you can remain afloat. So creditors are likely to increase. Debtors are likely to increase by a certain percentage yeah, because uh, you, the people you are going to borrow, so it, it's likely to increase also. The net profit is expected to increase by a certain percentage per annum. They said the business has already started, so we are likely to increase in our profit. And the net profit realized will be plus back to the business. It's assumed that the profit you're going to get, you're going to return it into business if you don't want to use it for your personal, uh, your personal purposes. So for that one, you do more research on how to make an income statement, how to make a, an, an, a profit and loss account, all those ones that are supposed to appear in your business plan. So you do more research on that one so that it can help you to come up with a good business plan. So lastly, we're going to look at break-even analysis. We have started the business, and uh, now we are in our second year. What next? How can we know what? How can we know whether this business has broken even? So the break-even analysis is where the total revenue is equal to the total costs. When you realize that the total revenue of your business is equal to the total costs, that means your business has bro has broken even, and so that one can say your profit is going to increase. So the fact is earning no more profit or zero profit. So uh, for break-even analysis, uh, the total revenue should be equal to the total cost in your business. So we have assumptions in break-even break point analysis. So the first assumption is that the fixed cost will always remain constant. It means that the fixed cost does not change as the output changes. So the output is likely to change, but the fixed cost will always remain the same. Then the cost and revenue behave in a linear fashion or linear manner. This one means that if output increases, the revenue will increase proportionately. And then that the owner, the only factor affecting cost and revenue is volume. So that's another assumption. Another assumption is that technology, production methods, and efficiency does not change. And then lastly, for graphical method, the analysis relates to one product or to a constant product mix. So that one, you'll also do some research on that one. So what is the importance of break-even analysis? Why should you analyze whether your business has broken even? So number one, as a management tool, it has the following benefits. You are the manager of that business you have started. It will help you to find specific level of output. Yeah, that's very important. And then number two, it will show you behavior trend of cost and sales. You can be able to to compare how the cost and sales are, are behaving in the market. And because of that, you can make a decision whether to increase sales or maybe to increase output, something like that. So that's the importance of break-even point. Number three, information can be used to make proper decisions. The information that you are getting from break-even analysis will help you to make proper decisions. And lastly, the analysis shows the safety level of a particular level of a particular level of activity. Safety level means the quality which it's safer to produce. So break even will assist you as a business owner to help you know the, the quality of the product you can produce and the quantity so that you cannot go uh, past what you're supposed to make and then we make losses. And lastly, we can look at the limitations to break even analysis. What is the limitation of this break even analysis? So number one, it's only done within specific levels of activity. You cannot do break-even analysis 
in all levels. You do them in specific levels of activities. And number two, fixed costs may change at different levels of activity, especially in the long run. That one's also a limitation of break-even point. Number three, variable costs may not give linear, linear trend. So variable costs may not give that clear linear trend. And lastly, the relevant time factor can affect break-even analysis. So we have seen how we can write a business plan from the first one, executive summary, uh, until we have reached the financial plan. So that's important for you to consider when you're writing a business plan. And as we say, we said early, a business plan acts like a roadmap for you as a business owner so that you can be able to know what you want to achieve and how you're going to achieve it. Uh, I believe that one has, very been, has been very beneficial for you and you're going to write an effective business plan. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for participation. Bye-bye.